Today's video lecture is about for loops. We're going to be talking about for loops and comparing them to while loops so you can see how they work together, how they are the same, and how they are different. A for loop is basically going to be a shortcut to a while loop. So let's review while loops. While loops are definite loops. That means they are count controlled. The control variable is the counter, and somewhere in the loop you have to increment the counter and it ends when the counter finally reaches the ending value. So here's an example of a while loop. Hopefully you've done several by now and this looks familiar to you. This is just a basic while loop that's going to increment the counter and accumulate the total. So a for loop is a shortcut. Contr count controlled loops that iterate over a range of integer, integer values are very common. A for loop is a definite loop. It is count controlled and the counter variable is built in. So that's what makes it kind of a shortcut to a while loop. It's also the incrementing is going to be built in. So it's going to take all the basics that happen here, a range of integers that's iterating, and it's just going to build in the structure so that you have you can do less work. So here's a while loop on the left, and here is the same for loop on the right. They do the exact same thing. So both times you have to initialize total, but notice that I don't have to initialize count. That's going to be built into the for loop. I'm still asking for an end value, and then for count, here is our control variable in range, and this is going to be a range of integers, and if there's nothing starting, then the default beginning value is zero. So just like over here I had count equals zero, this is going to be the default in, um, initial value for count is zero, and I'm going to go into the end value plus one. That's because whatever's in the range, you never get to that number, it's always going to be one less. So if I actually want to include the end value, I have to add one. Then inside I'm going to accumulate, but notice I do not need to increment, it's all built into the for loop. It's going to do that part for you. So these two do the exact same thing. You can see the for loop is only four lines of code. So what are the parts of a for loop? Okay, first of all, can you identify the control variable? Let's just kind of draw a line here. Control variable, it's built in. It's going to be my count. Now in the textbook, if you did your reading, you know that the count, that the, the control variable is usually I. That's kind of old school. That's just how we learned it or I in range, but you can use I if you want to count. Really, it doesn't matter what you call the variable, as long as you understand that it's going to be the counter. It's going to be your integers. So here's our control variable. The starting value, okay, if it's indicated, it's going to be the first number. And if it's not, then it's going to be zero. The end value is going to be the next number. And remember, it does not include the end value, so if you really do want it, add 1. And then there's the step value, and this is how you're going to be incrementing. If there's no step value, it's just going to increment by 1. So you start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I have a step value, I'm going to go by 2s. So 0, 2, 4, 6, or 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay. If my step value is negative, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So my starting value might be 10, my ending value could be 0, and I'm going to go 10, 9, 8, 7. So that's just some basics of your for loop. And now you're ready to do a program. For your program today, you're going to get some loop practice. So let's just take a look at the requirements. You can do this on the class website or you can just follow the video. You're going to create a program with three functions, and each function is going to use a for loop. Then you're going to create a main function that calls the loop functions, just so that you can test them. Now the goal of this program is to give you practice with the for loops, so that you know what each loop does. What happens inside the loop really isn't that important. You can get a total if you want to, or just kind of anything. You, we're going to be printing, but what is important is that you can explain what is happening in each loop. Do you know what the control variable is? Do you know the starting value, the ending value? Is there a step? So what you do inside the loop is up to you, but just make sure you understand what's happening in each loop. So let's take a look at just the first loop. You're going to ask for an ending number, and you're going to print all the numbers up to and including that ending value. 
So start a new program in Code Sculptor. You're going to start with your program, your comment block, and we're going to start a new function. And I just called my function count by one because that's what's going to happen inside this loop. I'm just going to start at one and I'm going to go up to and including that end value. So I called my function def count by one and I'm just going to add in some print statements so it makes it really clear what's happening. I'm going to ask for a high value. You could also call it end value. We've done that before. I'm just going to go ahead and change that because that's kind of what we've been doing lately. And I'm going to put here end value. And I'm going to use 1 as my start value, end value plus 1 as my end value, and I'm just going to print x as I go. If I put a little comma here, it's going to keep it on the same line. So that's just a little trick. I used x for my counter. You can use x, you can use count, you can use i, whatever you'd like to use. Then I've just got a couple print statements here to separate it from any other functions that I'm going to create. I've got the other one started here, but here's my main function, count by one. Let's run it. Enter the number to add up to. So I'm going to go, let's just go up to five. Okay, so I've printed count by one. The values of the count are one, two, three, four, five. Okay, if we run it again. I say that I want to go to ten. It's going to go from one up to ten. So that's exactly what the for loop is doing. Okay, now can you create a function called count by two? And what's going to be the difference? I'm going to have a starting value, ending value, and I'm going to have a step. Other than that, pretty, pretty much the same. I can change what I say here in the print, and then get that to work, and then can you do a countdown? So I'm going to have to kind of switch these two. The end value has, you know, the starting value has to be bigger than the end value. And then I'm going to have my countdown will be negative one. So give those three functions a try, get them to work, and then I've got a challenge for you.